Hallelujah. We are talking from Romans 12. If you want to walk with me through the first, only the first two verses, please. Mark it in your Bible. Mark it on your phone. With Tipex or something. Mark it there. My day word today is Romans 12. And I believe prophetically this God is saying something to us through specifically this part. Let's read. Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Now we can talk about this for a whole six months. There's such a lot in here. But let's touch on a few facets that I believe God just wants to lift out for us today. I urge you, therefore, I urge you. In other words, I beseech you. The essence of that, therefore, I challenge you. God is challenging you, and he's challenging you today. And with the intensity, I urge you means there's an intensity. That means there's a seriousness in what is going to be said now. Okay? I urge you in the view of God's mercy, God's practical help, God's support. It's saying in the view of the fact that God is with you, his support is there, his strength is there, his practical help is there for you. In the view of that, in the view of that is actually possible. Only because of that, I can challenge you, I can urge you, I can beseech you, I can encourage you to do the following. So many times we don't get it right when we are challenged by the word of God or by somebody. Oh, I'm in trouble, I must get out of trouble, I must rather do this. Oh, that's... We call that pathetic religion. Let's not get into that rubbish. In Jesus' name. Amen? Are you with me? But you can be challenged by God. You can be challenged by leaders. You can be challenged by the word, by the spirit of God. Why? Because his mercy is there. His practical help is there for you. He's with you. He's strengthening you. Amen? In the view of God's mercy, to do what? To offer your bodies as a living, holy, pleasing to God sacrifice. To offer your bodies. To present your body. My brother, my sister, is I present to you a specific place where you can dwell, where you can do whatever you want to. I present to the demonic force of lust and whatever rubbish. I present to you this platform, this house where you can come and do whatever you want to do. God says, your body needs to be presented as a house, as a platform, as a temple. For some other spirit to do something. And if I don't present my body to Christ, automatically it is presented to some other demonic force. Because your body will be used as a house, as a temple, as a platform. For some spirit to do something with it. And but the, the challenge is, it's not like you must choose to, I present my body as a platform, as an offering, as a temple, as a house for a spirit of religion and re or rebellion or own opinion or depression or anxiety or stress or lust or whatever. Huh. The challenge is, you don't have to say that, you don't have to make that decision. When I don't make the decision to present it to the light, the darkness automatically comes. I don't have to present my body to darkness. I just don't have to present it to love, joy, peace, patience, breakthrough, Holy Spirit agenda. And automatically it is presented to darkness. And that's where sometimes we are caught when in your emotions, you present your emotions not for God to bring healing in your soul. 
presenting your thought patterns. But flirting in thought patterns and flirting with ideas about opinions about, and about people and relationships and certain things, how I, we can justify certain things. And for some reason, sometimes it's okay with us. But God is raising up an army. But God is raising up a company of people, according to Hebrews 12, there will be the assembly of the firstborn. It's first start to say in the end time, when before the coming of Christ, yes, the foundation will be the blood of Christ. It will be Christ, the mediator of the new covenant. It will be, Christ, be God as the judge. What will happen, judging the world, everything will be shaken. But he wants... Not Christ to be presented just in that day. He wants today to you and me his blood to be presented as the entry point, as the place for victory. His blood, and because of the blood that I have boldness through the blood. Hello? And then Christ as the mediator, that I will not just acknowledge him, that I will know that he is the only one unto an excellent life. If I don't choose him, automatically I have all my other gods, all my other avenues unto happiness or unto fulfillment to alt, unto whatever. But then, point number five out of the seven is the assembly of the firstborn. Those who grow in maturity as children of God to become the sons of God. Out of the church, more and more and more, we will be seeing the assembly of the firstborn, a specific group of people in the church of Christ. The assembly of the firstborn. Now, Christ is the firstborn. Hello? But those who stand as sons with the Son of God in the end time, they will do mighty exploits. They will stand above whatever the world will bring against them. Like whatever the 666 and the dragon and the this and the that and the antichrist. And whatever that. There will be this company of people, of mature Christians. And the essence will be, it's all about him, not about me. I pray that you will be part of the assembly of the firstborn. And so me. Let it be so in Jesus' name. But those who present their bodies unto him, present your bodies, offer your bodies. Offer. Offering means it, it will cost you something. Offering is, I need to pay, I need to give something for that to happen. You need to give, give up, give up that luxury of whatever you feel that according to that you do. Whatever you want to think, this is a playground for whatever rubbish thoughts, dustbin and a uh, Ooh, I nearly said something else. Uh, what dump? Uh, rubbish dump. Rubbish dump. Eh? So, <laughs> present this mind not as a rubbish dump for whatever can come around. He said, no. It will be holy. A holy sacrifice a holy offering that means separated for god and for god alone holy is i will position my life for his use alone this my house will be a platform for him alone a platform for what is good what is excellent what is truth all the conspiracy theories and the this and the that and the that and the that about a lot of stuff and there's a lot of professional people that can say a lot about Corona and vaccine and about the end time and about the prophetic and about what's happening and about judgment and about whatever. More and more and more and more. At the end of the day, you need to present yourself unto him. Not unto the idea or unto the opinion or unto what this guy will say or what that guy will say. Make sure you are with him so that where he is, you will be. Bottom line. And what he wants to do in the final, final, final quest, in the final breakthrough, in the final bragging about his awesome power, in the final shaking of the heavens and earth for his kingdom to come, he wants what? He wants the assembly of the firstborn with him. He wants his sons and his daughters to see it with him, 
to come with him and say, I want to show you the greatest of whatever nation, in whatever generation I've longed to see. I want you to see that with me. And God is raising that type of church. We will be spectators or we will be with him, co-workers, and standing with him, seeing what he's doing, and standing in awe and amazement of his greatness. God, through your mercy, let it be us also. Amen. Amen. A holy sacrifice, but also a living, a living sacrifice. Guys, what is a living sacrifice? A thing that is dead, that is still alive. Hmm. Okay. A living sacrifice is only at the cross of Christ. A living sacrifice, instead of those dead sacrifice, what's that? Dead sacrifice is I give up. I'm in performance. I'm in dead religion. We see Hebrews 6. We believe the writer, Paul, speaking to the church. He's, he's speaking about a lot of principles and, principles. and then he says, must I really go back to the first foundations that had to be laid in your life? And the first of the six foundations, the first of all of them, is repentance from dead works. Dead works, where you are doing it, but there's only there's a death in it, but it's bringing no glory to him. A death that will not lead unto life. There's only one death, and that's a death in Christ. I have died with Christ, in Christ, and therefore I've been raised with him, and life is coming forth from my life because of death in Christ. But there's a death, there's an offering, there's a sacrifice that I present my body, my life as an offering that brings more death into me, more destruction in my life. That's why he says, no, don't give up. Don't do this, these dead works of good ideas and this and this and this. I must be in it in what you do because I'm the life. In your sacrificing of yourself, I must be part of that sacrifice. That's why God says it's a living sacrifice. Amen? You do it as if unto the Lord. You're doing it with God. You do it through the, the strength that God provides. But sometimes we are trying and we make this recommitment and we try this and we try that. But the only life that we see is in the temptation. The only life, what we feel is alive in us, is these things of my opinion, or my this, or my that, or my mindset, or my boxes that I put some people in. Where I gave my, right, myself the audacity and the right, and the arrogance, to put people in those boxes. And now I can decide how I want to respond to them. It's not how God sees how I will respond. But it's the, my boxes of my opinions that I created, where I've put people in. And according to those boxes, so I will relate to one another. Nothing to do with the Word, nothing to do with Holy Spirit, nothing to do with God. Or you decide, you will not bring death in your relationships with people. And then you will blame it on them. They are like this, oh, just keep them there. And you don't say keep them there, it just happens. That suddenly these guys or this person is there out of the relationship because they did this and this and this. Or they hurt you or they disappointed you or they this, this, this. And you have some right as a judge above the throne of God. Not one of us in Jesus' name. And if it was and the Holy Spirit spoke to you through repentance, you're out of it in Jesus' name. Amen. But the church, through the system of religion, will not have that anymore will not have that anymore. Because religion killed more people, destroyed more people than First and Second World War. In the name of religion. By fact. What I'm asking you, take the challenge. I beseech you, I urge you. Take the challenge to present your body as a living sacrifice. That life, there's a, there's a message through how you present your bodies, that how you give your life. They say even... Yes, we have Christians being persecuted with a lot of slaughtering and rubbish happening even in Afghanistan. That in the offering, so many times in martyrdom, the life coming forth from that person just before he dies is just so intense. Stephen, the first martyr, 
what happened. He saw heaven opening up. Hello. And he prayed the prayer for the breakthrough, for a key person to lay the foundation for the New Testament church. Wow. When? When the stones were raining on him. That's the moment. When a stone comes our way, we just run and pray for protection against it and we fight against every form of a stone and we get offended with every stone of somebody that were not perfect and said something wrong or did, did something wrong towards you. And then we just fight against that. Or maybe we pick up another stone and say, you will not come close to me again. Let's get out of that rubbish and present our bodies as a living sacrifice where the life of Christ is coming through. Amen? You have that? That's the first one. You must write down here and there. Okay. As a living, as a holy, and pleasing to God. Pleasing to God. What are we talking? What are we talking about? Pleasing. But it's all because of love. It's all because of love. I can do the right things. My brother, my sister, I can do the right things. But if it's not out of love, it means nothing. 1 Corinthians 13 says you can offer up your body. You can do these excellent things. You can see the angels. You can be so spiritually, amazingly, intensely walking in victory. And with a lot of things that you can accomplish. But if it's not in love, it's not pleasing unto the Lord. It's not pleasing unto the Lord. Are you with me? Through the blood of Christ, that's where you want to be, I want to be. That in the sacrifice, we experience an intimacy with God. That we can experience an intimacy in His love. That God, what I do, I do for you. So offer up my life there where you've placed me. A holy Sacrifice. That means set aside in the place where God has placed you. And he will put you many times among people and he will organize that people will come there to, to shake your flesh. So that you can choose to say, in spite of, I will still offer up as a holy sacrifice. So that means, in spite of what I feel now, I'm walking, my, giving myself only from a specific place unto the Lord. And this specific place unto the Lord is not where I will manipulate my friendships or that guy or that lady according to what I feel and what I don't feel, how things must be. Get off that demonic throne with your emotions. And don't manipulate that man or that woman like that anymore. But be healed in Christ Jesus. Present yourself in a place where God can touch you, where the healing can be in your heart. So that your hurt and your disappointments and all those stuff will not become this demonic force of control. That's like a Jezebel spirit. With me? And a Jezebel, that demonic force from Jezebel, standing radically against the guidance of God, standing radically against that, what God wants to do. That's verse number two, where we must come into the place of understanding His will, the good will of God, the pleasing will of God, the perfect will of God. But to know His will, to know that prophetic unction, to understand prophetically what God has for me and not, I must present myself in a place I was not presenting my body in a place to protect myself against hurt. To protect myself against things that can come my way. But to have the faith in God that God will take me where he wants to. And even if my flesh and my soul sometimes get hurt, I know I will be okay. But fear cannot protect me. Fear that I will get hurt, therefore I withdraw from certain relationships. How can fear be my God? I urge you to present your body as a sacrifice unto the demon of fear. That you will get hurt. Oh, that cannot be. That cannot be. God will help you. God will help me. Amen? In Jesus' name. Present yourself as an offering where the ultimate life is present. I'm not quitting because you can quit in rebellion because you are fed up. That's not an offering. 
those dead works. You give up. You are honest about what you feel. But you, there's only one place where you are allowed to have those honest talk. And that is at the cross of Christ. Otherwise, we call you arrogant. Because in my honesty, I stand against God. But with honesty, we say, God, I feel like this. I feel like that. I feel I want to kill that person. I feel like this. I feel like giving up. I feel like that. But I will not give up. But I will give over to you. Let's say, I will not give up. I will give over. And that place on the cross, at the cross, you must be seriously honest. So you better be honest. Now you don't have to take three hours just throwing everything out and then in three minutes and say, sorry God, I give myself to you. No, no, that, what type of life is that? So I can so be so miserable because I'm so dwelling on the, other, on the rubbish that bring me into a death sacrifice with a stench of death. Anybody have smelled maybe a rotten rat? Don't present yourself as a rotten rat. You're just first of all bringing a stench of religion in your life. That will not help me. In Jesus' name. And in your other relationships and in what you do, there's the stench and uh, things. No, when you present yourself unto God, you are protected by life. The fragrance of Christ that surrounds you. Oh, I'm talking about how perfect you must be. No, 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 no. We are all on our way with this. But if we cannot set it out there, the truth, that it can set us free, I cannot walk into that if I don't know where it is and what it is all about. So I encourage you, I beseech you, I challenge you to go for that. Amen? A living, holy, set apart for him only. Not set apart for your opinion. Set apart for him only. Pleasing, pleasing, pleasing sacrifice. So here I am, Lord, through the cross of Christ. But through the cross of Christ, what will happen? God will raise you up. But then, what happened? You've been raised up in Christ. Your spirit is perfect. Your spirit is perfect. Reborn. Perfect, perfect, perfect. But, still immature. Must grow up. But your soul always wants to take control. It says, soul will not take control. But soul wants to be in control. And suddenly, heaven is in control. And there's crisis. Because this is not just the day when you gave your life to Christ. God, I, I give up everything to you. I surrender everything to you. No, this is tomorrow in your emotions, tomorrow in your thought patterns, tomorrow in the opportunity. You make everyday decisions that I will surrender it to Christ or to my flesh or to this or to that. But soul will automatically put it into a place where God is not. Because soul must be in control, not God, in your life. Your enemy, first of all, is not... The devil himself. Your enemy is a soul that is not renewed. But now you take the land. You take your mind for Christ. You take the land. You take your emotions for God. Emotions not saved. Emotions in a lot of rubbish. Some thought patterns from hell. And hell controls certain thought patterns. Now the word says, work out, work out, work out your salvation. In fear and trembling. This is the salvation of your soul. Salvation of your emotions to be set free. To be saved from the rubbish. Work out the salvation for your mindset about relationships. To be saved. To be taken back. So that you can think about relationships. How God is thinking. You are free. To feel what God is feeling. You are free. You need to set free your soul. Your soul needs to be set free. But do it. Work out. That means, work means, effort. True. Don't just glide through it. Peace of God means, <sighs> peace doesn't mean the holiday. Peace means in your work, be led by the Spirit. And you are secure. You are safe in His peace. In your work, where your work is not a curse. Where your work is not a curse in Jesus' name. Work out your salvation. Put in an effort. 
to get your soul saved and in the right place. He says you will be this living, holy, pleasing sacrifice. And he says, verse 2, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If you think like the world is thinking, your soul is not saved. But in some other way, your soul must start to think the way God is thinking. Put your finger there and say, my soul must think what God is thinking. God, his thoughts in my spirit, eh? I have the mind of Christ. Do I hold the thoughts, feelings, and purposes of God in my spirit? It's there, it's there, it's there, it's there. What is so, what's the word? A shame. You know, if Christ is not physically walking in here, and we are just sitting, that's okay. But if Christ is in here, and we don't stand up and we cannot worship him, that is a shame. Are you with me? Now, the problem for your flesh and the problem that you are facing is the fact that God's presence is in you. That's a real hell of a problem for your soul if it's not transformed. The presence of Christ in your spirit. And you'll have to make sure that you get your soul saved. Hello? That you will work out your salvation. Get the mind transformed. Because otherwise it's like, yes, we are in this hall. The light is here, electricity is here, the switch, connection, everything is there. But we are falling over one another. We are falling over things. We're getting hurt. It's blood. It's this, it's that. And we're making a mess of everything because we don't put on the light. Now, the guy in the world, he's not so pathetic. I'm not talking about you guys or us, but I'm just talking about this, the story. The guy in the world, there is no light, there is no electricity, there is no switch, there is nothing. They are falling over one another and make a mess of, of a lot of stuff and they don't even know. They think it's, it's one whatever. That actually is still understandable. But if everything is here, we only have to connect the electricity, the light. Are we too lazy to do that? But the connection with the electricity is this, the word. If you cannot connect with the word, even though you have the word, even though we have the lights and we have everything, but we make the decision not to connect the electricity. But then we want somebody with a torch to come in and tell us what God is saying. And we're excited about when the guy with the torch show us something. But we are too lazy to connect with the word. My soul must connect with the word. Be renewed. Be renewed. Be renewed. Everybody do this. Be renewed. Okay? Yeah. So when you're showing your wife, just in this, you don't, that doesn't mean, he doesn't want to say he, you are crazy. You want to say that he is thinking like some other mampara and he is going to change his mind and get into the word of God. That's actually what he wanted to say. Are you with me? We need to get into the Word of God. We need to connect. We have it. Pathetic if we have everything, but we hurt ourselves and we get discouraged because it's just darkness. Pathetic if we have everything. The light is there. The switch. The cable. The whatever. We are just too lazy to connect everything. <sighs> and especially if you are called an electrician. Because God gives you the ability, the, the capacity to do it. The strength and the wisdom and what you call this, the savvy, or what? Something like that. No. You are able to do that. May God help you. May God help me. 
We cannot give ourselves as a sacrifice unto Him. We are messing up in our decisions. When I make that quality decision, I'm going to do this for God. And at the end of the day, you're just messing up in your quality decisions. Why? Because the key is you need to be transformed through the Word of God. But you make the quality decisions in a place where the enemy puts a lot of stumbling blocks and a lot of rubbish in and there's the bob wire and the this and the that and it's pitch dark and you go by faith, not by sight. And confess all those stuff. But it's just not working. When last did you make the decision to speak to somebody about Christ? When last did you really from your heart worship God? When last did you really, when you hear the word, you are just sucking it in and not allow your mind to flirt around with other thoughts while we are speaking about the word of God? How much flirting happened today in your mind? With your mind going all around when God wants to relate to you through the word at this moment. But in this time of intimacy that you can have with the word, you flirt with other stuff. While making as if you are intimate with God and his word. So we, when we come together, we, we teach ourselves how to flirt with the darkness. We teach ourselves how not to present ourselves as a living, holy, pleasing unto God's sacrifice. Because the connection needs to be transformed. So that what? So that what? So that what? The other three points are verse two. So that you can understand, so that you can discover what is the good, pleasing, perfect will of God. So that you can understand his voice and what he is saying and go and do it. So that the heavens are open, then you know his voice. Not first of all the voice of your flesh. Not first the voice of depression or discouragement or this or that. All these other stuff. No. You can have it. God wants to give it to you. I urge you because, because, because of the mercies of God. Because he's there. Because he's helping you. Because his strength is there. Because he's committed to you. Because he's ready to push you into this. To help you into this. Because he believes and he knows that you can have such a life. So much more he believes in you than what you can ever believe in yourself. Amen. Are you with me? What's the good will of God? We call it this, the good news. Everybody, the good news. So you, when you first want to start with the, the, the good will of God, it is good not to steal. Hmm. It is good not to swear. It is good not to be jealous about some rubbish. It is good that you will love God, love yourself, love your neighbor as yourself. It is good. It's the good will of God. It's the foundation. And may we be set free in that sense so that we understand how to love ourselves. Because only with that type of love you can love your neighbor. Sometimes we think, oh, I love you, and, and yeah, but with myself, you know, it doesn't work. Yeah, then it's a fake. You don't love him. You don't love her. If you cannot love yourself, it's a fake love. It's maybe a cry for love. And then, how does that work? I gave myself to that man. And I, I love David as my brother. And then he just, he just did this. And he told some story behind my back. Or laughed about this. Or mocked this. And I got hurt. And I just put him there. Why? Because I didn't love myself. Because if I love myself with the awesome love of the essence of creation, God himself. When he does that, I will have compassion on him. <laughs> Instead of being hurt and offended and push him away. If I know how to love myself. But otherwise, if I don't know how to love myself, my reaching out to him is all depending if he's going to respond accurately. 
So his pastor or leader didn't greet you nice. Well, he was frustrated or this, and he just said, why you did this, get this right? <laughs> I have an issue. You have an issue because you didn't receive God's love and don't know how to love yourself. Otherwise, you'll say, oh, pastor. No, no, no. You will not do that. No. You will rather ask God, God, what was I supposed to see? And if I don't understand, and pastor made a mistake, I will go to him, pastor, I saw this and I felt this and I felt this. Why did you say that? I'm not here to judge you, but why did you say that? I, I just want to understand because I respect the fact that my God said I must relate. And we have relationship and I respect the relationship. You don't have to say that. I respect the relationship not because you are perfect. Or imperfect. I respect the relationship because my perfect God that I serve said there must be a relationship. And because you respect God in the relationship, you want to sort out the other chachas that you could put in the relationship and take put, push God aside in that relationship. Because now we have issues. And if not, we have settled the thing, me and David. God will not have the right to tell me that I must forgive him. That I must open my heart towards him. I must have grace on him. I must love him. And I must walk in this relationship with him. But if I allow God and I have the opportunity to forgive and stand in God's grace. The relationship can go deeper. Whatever the enemy meant for evil, God will turn it for our good. Hello. And even if you are the guy... The clothes been put at your feet and the stones on your head. Your clothes there at the feet, stones on your head. Mr. Stephen and Mr. Saul. And Mr. Stephen, who know, who knew he's God, said, Father, forgive them. Don't let this come on their head. Like the stones are coming on your head from those guys. Let not this sin come on down on their heads. Have mercy on them. What came down? The light. Pew! And Saul became poor. Amen. Are you with me? Stephen is not submitted to the stones. He submitted to God. He knew who he was. A living, living sacrifice. Amen. And he knew his God. His mind was transformed. What a mess if I don't work out my salvation. In my soul, with fear and trembling, with respect for God. You cannot do it without fear and trembling. Because otherwise you will just argue with God. Argue with his will. Argue with this. I, I can sit here and I can ask you guys, how much of the word do you know? And you will have 50 voices speaking to you and justifying why you, why you don't feel guilty. Because there's no condemnation for those who don't know the Bible. Oh, sorry, the verse is actually different. <laughs> There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus, in the Word, in the living Word. Amen. So don't just feel guilty, just repent and get into the Word. Connect with the Word. Otherwise, what a mess and a waste of giving your life. And don't say, somebody must come in with a torch to show you through a prophecy just. Yes, we must prophesy. Yes, we must encourage one another. Yes, it must be. As a gift to the body of Christ, the prophets. But still, I need to connect with the word. Otherwise, it's a waste. Are you with me? So I do this and I get my soul saved from this rubbish mindset that I allowed, the poison that I allowed in my heart and in my soul. Yes. So that I can see the good will of God. Good, good news and good works. You all know good works, Ephesians 2.10, you are his creation, his workmanship, created to do, created to do. Wow, created to work. You were created to work on earth. You could Why you look at me as if you don't believe me? Only two. The two there outside. God created me to work. Let's say, 
God created me to work. Yeah, but they expect this of me and they expect... Okay, just, just change your mind that you get into a worship lifestyle because God is seeking those who will worship Him in spirit and truth. Uh, because then, yeah, they expect me to do this. Who? I thought you served Christ. Then whatever you do, you do as if unto the Lord, not as if unto me. That's the good will of God. Going for pleasing. Good will of God. Hello? I see the good works that God has prepared for me, and I see the good news. I get into that what is good. When God created heavens and earth, it was good. What is hanging over the people? Where are the people? In the good will of God even, because he created the heavens and the earth. But we mess it up. Let's get to the original plan of God. Are you with me? The good will of God. The pleasing is where it's all about relating once again. Like the pleasing offering, it's about relating. I do it because I love him. What's the will of God? God's will is he wants you to see his heart. Not he wants you to have an explanation until you understand why he is asking this of you. No, that is you trying to think you must be in control. Hello? Sometimes we want to find out the will of God, but no, it's not I want to find out the will of God. I want to understand why he is expecting this of me, otherwise I will not do it. Not I will not do it. No, I want to be sure. Because I want to be accurate with the Lord. Yes. But don't be misled. You know the will of God in your spirit. You must just get soul in line. If you get soul in line, then you will know the will of God. If you get soul saved and in line and transformed, it will more and more and more and more and more in a natural way, you will just, the will of God will come. The will of God will come. You with me? Oh, come on. Let's go with that. That's the good will of God. Pleasing is it's all about love. It's about this intimacy between you and him. It's about this intimacy between you and him. That what you do, you don't do it just for him. You do it with him. Now you find people saying, I'm not working for the Lord. I'm working with him. That's, that's not true. That's not accurate according to the word. Remember that. You do it with him and you do it for him. How are you doing it for him? Because you are a worshiper. A worshiper is doing something for him. I serve you as if unto the Lord. What does it mean? I do it for him. In the way that I serve you. That's how it must be. Eh? That's now you speaking to me and whoever. Are you, are you with me? So you better do what you do for him. But you cannot do it if you cannot do it with him. Holy Spirit must give you the strength to do it for him. God must give you the mercy, the grace, that you are able to do it for him. So with him, you do it for him. With Holy Spirit, you glorify Christ, because Holy Spirit always put the focus on Christ. That's the only way you can do it for Christ, if you're doing it with the Holy Spirit. But for the rest, that works. For the rest, not even the good will of God. A debt sacrifice instead of a living sacrifice. God will help you. God will help me, I believe. When you come into this place of the pleasing will of God, you know, when we, in the previous session, there were about five people who were in the army. Nobody here went to the army, hey? When we were forced, <laughs> when, when we were forced <laughs> for two years, I was the last group that went for two years because I said, God, oh, can I not have off from the army? Because you said I must get out of medical school just to go to the army for two years. Must I go, Lord? God gave me. And Paul was there for two full years. Yes, sir. <laughs> Last group. But in any case, you know when, when you come into that place and the corporal says, Attention! You like this, and he didn't speak clearly. I couldn't really hear what he was saying. He didn't speak in love. I didn't understand the heart of the corporal. Why he wanted me to stand on attention. I don't understand the reason where we are going to. I must be a responsible person, so I must know this. 
you know, with responsibility, I'm, I'm training and I'm, I'm dealing in my relationship with God. God, yes, with your father, you can sit with your best friend, Jesus Christ, you can sit. Yes, you can sit with him, your shepherd. He make you lay down in green pastures and you can have awesome time. He knock at the door, you open up, he will come in and you will, he has communion with you. He will commune with you, you with him. Oh man, they will be awesome, awesome. But there is times when he will just talk to you as a king in the palace. Where he will just say, Hop! Everybody say, Hop! I didn't hear it there. Everybody, one, two, three. Hop! <laughs> I first need to pray and fast about that. About this, Hop! where God says, Hop! And what he wants is, I want attention in one second. And then you must just know, what the freak did he say? Anybody saw some, some movies at least? Anybody of you saw some movies, some, some corporals? That they make this hell of a noise and you don't have a clue where, what is he doing? But for some reason they came to know the type of communication from the corporal. Are you with me? But in the kingdom, not anymore, in Jesus' name, in the past. Okay. God, we, I couldn't hear quick. I couldn't hear exactly what you say and why you say and how I must relate to what you said. And it's such a hell of a sacrifice to turn to the left and then start to march. Because I really w thought that we must go in that direction because the enemy is there. But the corporal, no, we need to go there, and then we need to go around and into a bush and in the bush, and then you need to sh shush and, and lay down. Because if we just turn there, we will be dead meat, like that rabbit or the arma bok. Yeah. Okay. Are you with me? But then we want to reason with him. And you know the problem. Then there's such a reasoning, and with this 20 troops with a corporal, 12 wants to go. Pew! But three is first doing with this. Uh, three are praying about what was hup, said, and two doesn't understand any. They are arguing with a corporal. And there they stand, the company of people. Lord, have mercy on us. Amen. Are you still here? And your salary is a corporal. You are a corporal. You're supposed to be a corporal there where you go. Because first of all, a corporal in the spirit. When you say, Hup! the demonic force is supposed to have attention. Get out of this place in the mighty name of Jesus. Spirit of destruction. And immediately, there. Because you have authority. Why? Because you know how to stand under authority. You don't know how to stand under authority. Mr. Mr. Lucifer, what happened? With no arrogance towards the devil. We cannot. We are only by grace. Amen? Because we submitted to it. But in the name of Christ, you know your authority. Then he needs to flee. He needs to go. But too many times, when you don't feel like doing something in the past, and you feel... He didn't deal with me very nice, or this, or that intimidation, or what, 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 what. When that feeling of you could get hurt, or there he's doing the same thing that I told him, he must do it that with me. With me. We, we shared hearts, and, and, and she's doing that again. Immediately, hop! Get myself a holy whip. What's this, a whip? Tantrum, a holy tantrum. And my heart, there it goes. Out of the relationship. I've heard this before. Hup! I go into boredom. I go I across the field. I'm just frustrated. Oh, I've heard this 20 times already. And there, there I go. Instead of, Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me? I'm standing on attention. Even there's a lot of hup, 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 hup from other spirits and other rubbish that normally I responded to. I fire them as corporals in my life. I stood on attention when they said, oh, but not anymore. Rejection, fear of rejection. Oh, I will not stand on attention for them anymore. 
And yeah, then he does that again. And she did it again. You're waiting for a corporal. You know? So when those guys standing on attention and there's some, some kitty walking past or some drunkard walking past, hey, look at this. Hop! Go to the left! And there they go to the left. What a pathetic lot of soldiers. Are you with me? But the enemy has no authority. That little kitty, that drunkard walking past the army camp and there you see... He has no authority over you, but you will respond to him. He will stand there. He has no authority, but you are giving him authority. And he will come closer because these guys, and he's seeing these clowns and he's laughing at you. Not anymore. Not with me anymore. He will not laugh at me anymore in Jesus' name. Because we will learn how to stand in the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. Because we will connect with this word as the final authority. And say, I cannot live without your word. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Amen. I need to eat your word. I am in love with your word. I am dependent on your word. I, I love your words. I love the words from your mouth. Because it's showing your heart to me. You need to understand his heart then you, will don't, you don't necessarily always have to understand what's happening. But I need to understand what's happening and what's, why not this, why not that, if I don't understand his heart. But if I know his heart is for me, Jeremiah 29, 11, why is there? Because Jeremiah is saying a lot of stuff to this nation of what's going to happen to them, what's not going to happen, and how they're supposed to change. But in the midst of that, he's saying, understand God's heart. He, he, he must, you need to know the thoughts here that he's thinking about you. The thoughts to give you a hopeful future. A hopeful future. God has a hope. God is excited about your future. But you need to see his heart. If you can understand his heart of love, then you will do what he tells you without understanding why. But you must understand why if you're not willing to get into the Word and understand His heart. You with me? I challenge you, I urge you to do that. Lastly, we get into the good, the pleasing out of relationship with love. Perfect will of God. Perfect will is you need to be perfect. You can only be perfect through one, the blood of Christ. When you are in this turmoil and with people in all this stuff, it's just called arrogance from hell. But you know, in this place is when you've done everything that you had to do. Paul says, Don't you unverdienstelijke dienstknechte. Oh, jette. Give me that in English. Unverdienstelijke dienstknechte. Aram. But. Unworthy servant. You're not worthy of what God's going to give you. Even if you've done everything that he asked you to do. Because what you do was in any case only because of the grace of God through the blood of Christ in the name of Jesus. Are you with me? The place of perfection in his perfect will is a man that lives according to the revelation of who Christ is through the cross. That is perfect because of the blood. I make a mess, but through forgiveness and through the cross and I, and I boast in the cross, I come back into place of perfection. Because if I stand through the blood of Christ in the name of Jesus against what the enemy wants to do, it's all about the perfect sacrifice, the blood, and the perfect name of Jesus Christ. And through that, 100%, out of 100%, that enemy knows that I need to flee. Because you come in the name of perfection against him. Jesus. And his blood, perfect Lamb of God, slain. Are you with me? Are you with me? But you, too many times we are in this place, I must do this now right. I must do this right. And then you don't do it right and you feel discouraged. And you try to do this right and he does expect me to do this and I cannot do this right. And you are just in this place. It's why. 
because you started with the first one, I need to present my body as an offering. Offering. So now I present my body as an offering, so I need to be doing this right in a perfect way. But this whole process, you're not allowing. Connecting with the word, giving yourself out of love, releasing in worship yourself to God. And it's just one hell of a fight in you, in your walk with Christ. Because it's there and it's here and nothing in between. It's not like we choose for nothing in between, but we don't go with God through the processes. Let's allow that so that in that place, whatever you've done, whatever your success you've seen, you'll say, I will boast in nothing except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. I have no life of success if it's not because of Christ, because I'm crucified with Christ. I no longer live. He's living through me. And that is the place of perfection through the blood of Christ. God, come and deal with us. Holy Spirit, I pray that everybody here will hear the challenge that you, you, you alone are giving them. God, we are here and we present our bodies, therefore. Here we are, Lord, through your mercy, through your presence, through your help, only because of your help, we present our bodies as a living sacrifice. We are not giving up, Lord. We are giving over to you. And thank you for the honor, the privilege that we have. That through the place of honesty and humility, we can surrender our hearts to you. As a living sacrifice, holy sacrifice, we will only bow down to you. We will not allow other rubbish to come in, in Jesus' name. Through the blood of Christ, we say you have no right, no authority here. You spirit of compromise. Depression, negativity, anxiety, fears. You go in Jesus' name. Because we are presenting our bodies as a platform, as a house only for God and God alone. To do whatever you want to do, Lord. Pleasing. Pleasing. Holy Spirit, come and do that what is pleasing unto the Father. In our lives and through our lives. Please. God, we choose to connect our lives with the Word. Forgive us for not... Coming into your word, Lord, for not working out our salvation with fear and trembling, for not respecting the road that you are giving us, the ability that you are giving us to get our emotions and our thought patterns and our opinions saved into a place so that we can think the way you are thinking, Lord. Desire what you desire. Set us free through your word. We make that commitment to connect with your word. Holy Spirit, give us a hunger for your word. Thank you that you come and you do that, Lord, please. Therefore, thank you for the opportunity that we can come to know your will. God, you don't are just showing it, us, showing it to us, Lord, because you want us to seek you. To seek you. Here we are, Lord. We make the decision. We two or more agree. We agree even with your word. That we will seek you with our whole heart. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So that we can walk according to the good news, the good works, the good will of God. In a love relationship that we will be driven by your love, led by your peace, with your joy as our strength, Lord, in the pleasing will of God. So that we can live from this place of perfection, seated with Christ in heavenly places, through the blood of Christ, where we only, we choose today, we will only boast in the cross, because we can only boast in your goodness, in your mercy, Lord. In your grace over our lives. Help us to respect your blood. And thank you that we can go through your word, through your spirit, in your name. From a place of perfection into where you have called us to be. We thank you for that, that you come and do that. Even now, through communion. That we boast in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. While you're focusing on God, if your life is right with God, you've surrendered your life with, to Him and there's no issue of something, you are free to partake with us in communion, communion. But please, respect the communion. 
Don't bring judgment over yourself if you know, no, there's first things I need to sort out. God, you took the cup and you said, this is the New Testament in my blood. Drink thereof. And as you do, affectionately remember me. So you took the bread and you broke it and you said, this is my body broken for you. It's a forgiveness for all your sin. Eat as you affectionately remember me. For as you drink this cup, as often as you drink this cup and eat this bread, you proclaim my death. God, today we proclaim your death through communion. We stand in the place through your blood, through your body. We stand in the place of perfection because we honor your perfection. We honor the perfect offering. We honor the perfect Lamb of God. That's why we stand in perfection. Not looking at our own lives. No, but because of the blood. Because of your work. Thank you for your grace. I pray that each one of us will be arrested by the message of the cross. By the message of the cross. We honor you for that. We thank you for that, Father. You come and do that in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Just have your time with him. In communion.